Hi, Dr. John with Pro Chiropractic, and we're here today with Michelle, and Michelle is uh, currently training for a half marathon and does some weight training as well, and uh, she was telling me that she was having some issues with her hips and with her knees, and so we're running through a functional evaluation with her, found some things that uh, we thought were worth shooting a video about. So Michelle, if you could tell us what you've been feeling, that would be great. Yeah, so basically I've been experiencing some pain in my knee when I do any types of uh, weighted lunges, weighted squats. Um, if I am running when I'm starting my training, once I hit about five miles, my hips tend to lock up. I feel like I can't really take another step really unless I stop and kind of stretch out and then resume. Okay, perfect. And so, you know, here at Pro Chiropractic and with our partner clinic, Pro Physio, it's important for us to assess the area of complaint or the area of pain. So certainly the hip would be something that we look at, but especially since she's running and in general, I think it's important to look beyond the area of pain and not just chase the pain. So we actually started with Michelle's feet and I'm gonna show you a couple things that we found. So with her, for instance, if we look at for the type of her foot, okay, she has what we call a cavus foot. So it's a high arching foot with equinus. That means that the front of the foot drops down further than the back of the foot. Those two things in combination can cause a difference in how the body responds to the ground forces, what we call ground reaction forces, and cause different forces to go up into her knees. But we looked a little deeper, and one thing I found is when I load her toe, which happens every time she takes a step, when we push this up, so I'm, I'm pushing on the bottom part of her, her great toe, or what we call the hallux, which is, again, what happens every time she walks or runs, See how there's very limited motion here on this right side? And if we go over to the left side and I do the same thing, pushing about the same amount of pressure, see how that moves? Okay. Does it feel like I'm pushing about the same, mm -hmm. Michelle? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this is what we call functional hallux limitus, okay, or FHL for short. And basically it's a genetic difference in how the big toe functions. And it can be made uh, worse with more activity or more athleticism at a younger age. And so what her body is going to do is it still needs to flex this big toe to create this loading of the arch so she can explode off of her foot every time she walks, runs, or jumps. And so what it will do is it will push this big toe into the small toe. It will roll her foot in all right, to clear more room for that to move. So she will experience a little bit of soreness probably in this joint, all right, but probably won't have primary pain here at least not at first. So again, it's gonna deviate in, roll like this, and when that happens, we call that forefoot over pronation. Okay, it's collapsing more to clear this big toe. Now when that happens, I'm gonna stabilize here. Look what happens to her knee, even when I'm stabilizing. The knee rotates in. So potentially, the knee pain that she's feeling could be as a result of her body trying to compensate for this toe. So we ran through a couple more functional tests, and I'll show you what those look like. Go ahead and lay on your back, Michelle. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate a muscle behind the knee called the popliteus. The popliteus is a locker and unlocker and stabilizer of the knee. It's located behind the knee. It's kind of a diagonal muscle here. And so to isolate that, we're going to go to the unaffected side. I'm going to have her bend, turn her foot and leg up and in. And I want her to lock her leg and foot up here, don't let me turn it out. And I'm pushing progressively in, and she's holding fairly firmly there. And we're gonna do the same thing here, same thing, hold up and in, and I'm gonna try to turn it out, hold hard as you can, hard as you can, and you can see that that gives out. So, this is a sign that functionally, her body is not able to isolate and hold that muscle. In my opinion, it's because her body is compensating for this abnormal motion here, a chronic turning of her shin bone or tibia here, and this muscle is fatigued from over firing. Now if we continue up the chain and try to isolate into her hip, hold in, lock there, don't let me turn out, okay, hold out, don't let me turn in, go one more time, hold, okay, hard as you can Michelle, okay, now we'll go to the other side, turn in, hold, don't let me turn out, Hard as you can, hard as you can. And see how she can lock that and go ahead and turn out. Don't let me turn out. Okay. And so you see she also has a similar problem into the hip, trying to stabilize that area. Now when I move her into a position that tests for FAI or impingement of the hip, 
there's more pinchiness and clunkiness on this side than the other side. So potentially her hip pain and knee pain might not be coming from her hip or knee at all. It may have it be as a result of some foot dysfunction down here. So let me sit you up, Michelle. So in summary, when we look at runners or other athletic injuries, it's very important that we look beyond the area just of pain alone and not just chasing that pain down, but look at the entire body as a functional unit. Look at joints, look at muscle, look at fascia, but more look at the function of those things. Address each of those and that'll help Michelle run her race, hopefully pain free. And uh, if you have questions on this, please post them below on the video. And if you'd like us to address anything else, you can always uh, post a comment there. We're always interested in hearing uh, uh, what patients and uh, athletes out there think and want to know. Again, Dr. John with Pro Chiropractic, and thanks for watching.